Jill Nagy Brow. It's the fastest route from Santa Model we execute. In this video, I want to talk about the remesh tool inside of Geomagic Wrap. So this tool, the name can be a little bit confusing because we call it remesh and that term is used a variety of different ways in polygon editing software. Even other softwares within our product line, you find this remesh tool being used in a variety of different ways. Um, but for this tool inside of Wrap, um, the, the main point of this tool is to take data, polygon data that doesn't come from scanners, primarily coming from different modelers or CAD models that have been converted back to meshes or converted over to meshes and remesh those in an intelligent way. And there's a few problems. There's a few problems that happen when you convert a CAD model over to a mesh. If the software that did it, it isn't very skilled with uh, polygon meshes. And there's a whole host of problems that happen with them. So here is a mesh that was converted from a, uh, a CAD model in another software. So if I just go ahead and select one of these, We'll just select this one and I'll show only that one. And we'll come over to the display and turn on the edges. Um, so for most applications, you'll be it'll be okay to use this polygon mesh. Like if I was going to go print, I can go use this. Um, but I will say that if I were going to fit surfaces on this and and or reverse engineer it, um, sometimes it's better to remesh this in a more intelligent way in order to work with it in another software. So that's what this remesh tool does. I'll go ahead and toggle this off and we'll just go inside of the remesh tool. And this goes for a couple uh, applications here. I'll, I'll just rewind real quick. If you bring in a CAD model, here's an example of a CAD model into wrap that you need to convert it to polygons. I'll hit convert and then turn on the edges. You'll see here right away, wrap does a better job just with its defaults of converting that over, converting that over to a nice clean polygon. You'll see, but you still have some of this stuff happen. And that's exactly what we are going to look to change by going into the remesh tool. So go ahead and grab this, come over to remesh. And the first thing you can do is you can put in a target edge length. So what are what is the target edge length of a triangle? on this model. And you see here by default, it just randomly looks at the overall bounding box of the model and just throws a number out there to start. But if you want to come in here and just say maybe like 0.1 first, and we'll run it with these settings first and then we'll talk about it later. Another thing that Wrap has this concept and you'll notice right away if I, if I turn that off, there are sharp edges. Wrap has this idea of boundaries. So you can label some of these uh, edges of triangles boundaries. And those edges of boundaries will get respected during certain tools. So if I turn on add boundaries, angle, and minimum edge length, you'll see here that it goes around and it looks for all those sharp edges and labels them as boundaries. And there are other areas in the software where you can create boundaries by running such a tool. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that if you identify these as sharp edge boundaries that it's not gonna round those off. And you can set this angle. The angle is basically, if we look over here, this angle here is larger than that. So if I come over, I can identify that in and change the value. And as I change that value, so let's just set it for 10. 
you'll see that it changes the areas of the model that it considers to add boundaries to, and you're changing the angles in which it looks. So if I say five, so if I come back through here and just make it eight, you'll see that it, it's able to find that edge there as well. And you can always create these ahead of time. So if the automatic tool doesn't work in here, you can come in here and you can say, I want to create boundaries by a crease angle. And you can do that same sort of thing here where you come in and just drop down to, let's just say 10. And then you can change that minimum um, edge length because sometimes areas like this may get excluded. So if you drop down to three, there we go. So you see here, I just said down to one. So it's gonna look at all of this. And then this is one of the side effects here is um, if you come down to 0. 0.5 and then maybe bounce up a little bit to 15 so you can draw um, you can then kind of find a balance of identifying the edge length and the angle that gives you the boundaries you want now you can always just come in after as well if you want to come in and create you can actually create them from a spline and draw them um, there's lots of different things you can do there. Now, if you come back over here, I can, I could use that same filter over here because, uh, I was able to do it with the automatic tools and you'll see here it's set at 0.4 right now. If we go ahead and just say 0.2 to start off with and then hit apply, it will take it a second to run. And it's going to go through and retriangulate inside of all those boundaries and create cleaner uh, polygons as, a, as opposed to those real long streaky ones. And this will help us. This does create a better model for printing or reverse engineering. There's lots of different things that you can do with this. Now, you'll notice that sometimes you get a little bit of a... Like, less triangles there because it's applying this uniform uh, edge there. So what you can do is reset and come back over here. And if you, if you want to drop down, and it has a limit as to how far it will let you go. So we'll just go up to, we'll go there and then let it calculate. Now, if we turn it on, you see here that that target edge length has been reduced and look at how now you are cranking up the resolution so you got higher triangle count there but you see now it's at a nice clean triangle now there's going to be a little bit of that if it was faceted that's going to happen there but we're creating nice clean triangles from those and that's where it goes like if you can get that CAD model and convert it back using a software like wrap or any of the products within our portfolio here you'll get a better cleaner mesh to begin with so one more final point before we close out is if you do get the cad model and you drag it in here one advantage of having that is the fact that we retain those boundaries now that we talked about what those boundaries are we retain those boundaries and convert them as you convert over and then over to a polygon. So another little element here is we mesh a polygon object at 400,000 triangles when you bring it in as a display, but you can change that. So if you come over here to the app button and then options, and you come down to CAD, and you can always tell it to automatically import as a mesh um, there, but over here, you can come over and if you wanted it to be a million triangles 
and then you can set your max edge length. And if you wanted to, I'm just going to crank it down <laughs> a little bit here. So a quarter of a millimeter and then a million triangles. Now, if we go ahead and we get rid of this and I just drag it in. Now a little uh, reminder, if you drag into the graphics window, it does an open. If you drag into the model manager over here, it does an import. So that's a little shortcut for Geomagic Wrap that's nice and interesting that some people forget exists. But I like to highlight those things as we're talking about this. So now you see that it ended up in the software. The display is a million. How many faces it has. So we're at a million now. And then we will zoom in here because this is this will be apparent if we convert it back to polygons. And you could always duplicate it and then convert it back to polygons if you really wanted the CAD still in here. And see an advantage of doing it in wrap with CAD straight back is you see it keeps the boundaries everywhere, right? And you get a nice clean polygon mesh. And if you turn on the edges here, you could always now run remesh on that. There, we'll just do that. So now take a look. We went ahead and cranked it to 11 and hit OK. And you'll notice that the uh, it's creating a beautiful polygon mesh now. Now it's 3 million triangles. Now, if that's too high for you, you could always come back and run a decimate and fix boundaries and do this happy medium. It's like, how about one? Let's do like, just do half, 50%. There we go. Give it a curvature priority, decimate it down. So it'll reduce a little more in this area, but it'll keep in all the high degrees. And then you'll have a gorgeous uh, polygon file for whatever it is that you're looking to do downstream. So once it's done decimating, turn on the edges. Beautiful, clean triangle mesh data from a CAD file. So that's what the remesh tool is and wrap. I hope for hope this was helpful.